Good morning, guys. I'm on my way to work, and I don't have a whole lot of time this week, and so I figured I would just do this as I am on my way in. I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that uh, I have learned from some of my own experience, and uh, you guys get to learn from some of the mistakes I've made. Last night I had a buddy come over and help me play around with my camera, and we goofed off with that. We have tried to play around with the mic, and basically we could not figure out why the sound wasn't getting to be as good as we wanted it to be. Uh, the conclusion that we came to, this buddy of mine, he's a professional videographer by the way, the conclusion that we came to is just that the base of the camera that I was using was just not ideal for doing videography. That's especially true when it comes to some other things that I would like it to be able to do. And so I have to kind of go back to the drawing board as far as finding the right equipment, which can be frustrating. Um, it's especially frustrating because I've invested uh, no small amount of time or money into finding all of the right gear, the right gear, because I didn't really buy the right gear. I just bought, you know, the cheap version of the right gear. Uh, and then now I have to find something else. And so there were two problems with the way that this went down. First is that, uh, kind of like I already alluded to, I did my research, I studied what other guys are doing who, uh, do, who have successful YouTube channels, who vlog and and do a good job with this and I saw the gear that they were using and decided that I was gonna do something similar. The problem there is similar because what I did is I ended up buying a camera base that was like 500 bucks versus 1200 bucks and you know for obvious reasons you don't want to overcommit at a certain point. You buy the microphone, I buy a couple of different lenses, I buy extra batteries, all of a sudden I'm into this thing not a small amount of money, but it's still not doing what I wanted it to do. So problem number one. Problem number two is I didn't think about the fact that all of that gear would not be conducive to both my lifestyle or my filming style. Because I have so much going on and because I'm not one of these guys like Casey Neistat or Max Tuning who really have gotten into the habit so much of uh, vlogging, I can't lug around a giant DSLR with me every day. It just it's, uh, it doesn't work for me. And so I didn't think about that before I actually bought it. So two problems, and then now I have to go back to find something else. I've got a few things that I'm looking at that hopefully should be able to provide higher quality video and even more so higher quality audio. So I can not only put out less distracting content to help you guys actually be able to focus on the quality of what I'm saying, but then it'll also be more frequent content because it will be more conducive to what my lifestyle is and I can actually record and edit stuff more frequently than what I've been doing in the past. So two wins if I take the right approach. So let's take the same lesson, these same principles and apply it to your style. Let's say that you decide that you want to start dressing better and so you start looking up to different guys and you see these guys that have massive Instagram followings or they're the guys who you see in articles in GQ or uh, on Tumblr pages or YouTube channels or anywhere else and you decide, all right, well I wanna kinda do like this guy but I certainly can't afford to spend what he spends and so I'm gonna just do the best I can. If you don't do that right, like I didn't do it right, I didn't study and I didn't focus on features, I just focused on it looks like the right kind of DSLR and it costs what I can afford. I didn't pay attention to how the audio would work with it. I didn't pay attention to whether or not it had a flip out screen so I could actually see if I was in proper frame. I wasn't paying attention to features, I was just paying attention to looks like what the guys do and it costs what I can afford. That doesn't work and it doesn't work for your clothing either, even though clothing is something that is more aesthetically based. You have to pay attention to the features. Does it breathe the way that they want it to? Does it fit the way that you want it to? Does it have the actual features that you're after? Or does it just look like those guys, their clothing, and cost you a whole lot less? So, good style lesson from that. The other one is, is it conducive to your lifestyle? And this is where it comes down to, just because you like what these guys are wearing, doesn't mean that it actually benefits you. If you really look up to guys that wear suits every single day, but you work on an oil rig, does it benefit you to have an entire closet full of suits? Probably not. Yeah, you definitely wanna have one or two, but can you take those same principles of style and apply them to your more rugged look? Same goes for a guy who works in a business casual environment, but he really likes, I don't know, like a cowboy aesthetic, okay? He can maybe take some of those same principles and apply them 
to his own lifestyle, but it probably will do him more harm than good, both from his physical interaction with the world and his social interaction with the world, if he dresses entirely like a cowboy in an environment or in a lifestyle that's not appropriate for him to do that. So, second principle with that. Basically, what I want you guys to learn from my mistakes is this idea that I'm always preaching, but I'm not practicing in this limited context. Take a more deliberate approach. Rather than just experimenting, and there's nothing wrong with experimenting, especially because, yeah, I mean, I've spent some money. I can probably recoup it by selling this stuff up on eBay. The knowledge that I have now is significantly more valuable than I would have otherwise, so it certainly could be a lot worse. In fact, in, in a lot of ways, the negative experience, I can turn this into an opportunity and have it be for my good, which you can also do when you make aesthetic mistakes as you're getting better at dressing well, so don't beat yourself up about it too much. But I can be better off now, and I would have been better off sooner if I would have just been a little bit more deliberate, if I would have paid attention to features over just similarities, and if I would have thought about how is this equipment actually going to work within my lifestyle. Now going back to this idea of lifestyle, this is a huge one, and I want to help you guys understand that. You've probably heard me talk about this before. If you're new to the channel, I'll give you some help on this. Knowing your lifestyle, knowing what you do with your life, your approach to the world is one of the most crucial, you know what, scratch that. It is the most crucial aspect to dressing well. You have to know how you fit into the world before you can dress in a way that's, that's appropriate, comfortable, and stylish. And I help you do that. I have a quiz for you. Seven questions long, I'm gonna link for it up here above. I want you to go take this quiz. Super easy, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna tell you if you fit into one of the three major style archetypes, those being rugged, refined, and rakish. Where you fall in with one of those, you probably have an element of all three, but where you fall primarily into one of those is going to be how you want to start to build your style. So go check that out. I hope you guys like this video. Leave me a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time.